Welcome to the Total Boss Podcast, and I'm your host, Cristiano Green, a podcast where we talk about finding fulfillment through self-development, being a leader of your own life, and getting the most out of it as well. Tenacity, originality, talent, authenticity, and being legendary. It's all about living your best life. Hello, 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 all you total bosses out there, and welcome to another episode of the Total Boss Podcast. Now, I am your host, Christiana Green, and I am a relationship coach working with gay men, and I show them how that they can attract and create loving, healthy, and passionate relationships in their life. So I'm super excited for this week's episode because we have a special guest today, and he's one of my amazing clients that we've been working with since the the beginning of 2022. Actually, I think we actually started back last year, but we've been consistently working together since uh, the beginning of the year, and his name is Rob Overall. And I'd love uh, for you, Rob, to introduce a little bit more about who you are and uh, why you're here today. Um, I'm Rob. Overall, I live in Denver, Colorado, the U.S., way far from you. Yes. Um, I've done a lot of extensive extensive coaching over the last few years. Um, I wasn't happy with a lot of the coaching programs I was in until I met you, Cristiano, and have been very fortunate to work with you yeah. for, for a while now. Um, but more consistently, like you said, this year. Um, I was in a place probably where I was in very bad relationships. Um, you know, a lot of self-destructive stuff because I didn't truly love myself. Um, so I think I sought out bad relationships and it wasn't until I finally learned to love myself with the help of you, um, that I was able to allow a relationship into my life. And now I'm, um, I guess in a relationship, um, at least I'm in the beginning of one that I'm very happy with. It's actually yeah. someone I've dated in the past, so we can talk more about that later. Yeah, we'll get into that for sure. So like I said, thank you for being here today. I'm excited for this conversation. So um, I'd love to, you know, start by talking a bit about, you know, what it was like for you, because obviously you said that, you know, you, you you weren't loving yourself, you weren't in a good place often growing up, and that led to you having, you know, not so great relationships. Do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, you know, what it was like for you growing up and what led you to the place where you probably weren't loving yourself so much? Um, Well, being my age, mostly probably, it wasn't accepted as much as it probably is now for younger gay people. I was bullied a lot growing up. Um, I grew up in a law enforcement household where it wasn't super accepted. Um, Although uh, my mom wasn't super accepting at first, but did come around rather quickly. Um, I was brought up in a very Christian family. Uh, I am not one of those gay people who feels like Christianity Christianity Mm -hmm. is the, you know, devil of all things. I'm still a big Christian. And that was always, that was always one of my big things in dating was that I, I wanted another to date another Christian, but that was always the one thing that I let go. You know, I never actually dated someone that was a Christian. Um, I've had a lot of medical issues over the years and I let that play a lot in my dating life. Um, probably a lot in the people that I dated knowing that they wouldn't go anywhere because I was letting them, you know, I was basically taking care of them or whatnot. Um, So I knew they wouldn't go anywhere, but I think I sought out those kinds of relationships because I didn't truly know how to love myself. And I was afraid that if I did, you know, how would I find someone else? But once I did learn to love myself, that energetic attraction that I put out there just made it all kind of fall into place. Yeah. And and we all know what happens when we're not in a good place, you know, 
our energy also attracts that. So the probably the people that were coming and being interested in you were coming from that place as well. So um, it's an important thing that you mentioned before was to said that I feel like I sought out those types of relationships. Now, if you were to look back, do you feel like that was consciously a choice or unconsciously a choice? And and because you've reflected on it now, you are seeing you know, the, the, the errors in your okay, way in the past. I think it was unconscious for many, many years, but it was definitely conscious the last few times I dated someone and actually the person that I'm dating now, it was conscious when I was with him that it was a good relationship and that I needed to sabotage it because I didn't want that. (laughs) Because you didn't know what that was and you also maybe you know, didn't feel like you deserved it as well. Yeah. Right. I didn't know what to do. I mean, we never argued. We had a lot of mutual interest. We both went to church. We both had a heavy Christian background and it was all just so foreign to me. I just completely sabotaged it and made up excuses on why he wasn't the right person. And even in the last eight months of him and I talking about wanting to get back together, I still kept saying, no, I don't think I can do this. Yeah. I remember that for a lot from what I was talking about. You said, you know, we were talking about, you know, you because you you stopped yourself from from dating for a very long time as well because of, you know, a number of different things that have obviously happened to you. Um, and then, like I said, when we when we worked on things and you started to date again, he wasn't even really someone that you would have thought about because you were you were like you were putting yourself out there online and doing all these things, but Talk a little bit about, you know, that journey of, you know, what stopped you from dating for so long and, you know, well, as much as feels comfortable for you to, you know, share as well. So um, I, uh, I guess the biggest thing as far as dating, well, uh, I'm HIV positive and I've had a lot of issues revolving around that. I had my first heart attack in 2017, which led me to the sale of my businesses in 2018 when I found out I had cancer, um, rectal cancer, Mm. and I had to go through radiation and chemo at the same time. And then after a year of living hell after treatment of doctors continuously telling me I needed a colostomy and me saying, Oh God, I'm single. I can't do that. Um, Finally, it was like, they were telling me, well, if you don't do this, it's going to kill you. Um, and finally, I just one day I'm like, OK, either you you do it or I'm going to do it because um, <laughs> I just couldn't stand it anymore. But I stopped dating. I was attacked um, mm. about five years ago where I was brutally beaten, raped, strangled. Um, uh, and that was the last time I was actually with someone. But that wasn't the total reason I haven't dated. A lot of it was around self, fear and doubt with the ostomy, you know, the HIV, the heart attacks. I have not been healthy at all. I had a second heart attack in 2020 at the beginning of COVID. Um, But honestly, the more work I've done on myself, I've lost, I was 225 pounds about Five years ago when I split up with my last partner shortly, well, it's been about six years now. Um, and I'm down to 162 now. I found out I was diabetic last July to the point of my A1C was 10, almost 10, which is where they require insulin. And I was like, nope, not gonna happen, not doing that. Yeah. So with diet and exercise, um, I've lost a lot of weight. The weight hasn't all been since last July, but a lot of it has been. Um, but my A1C that I found out on my birthday, which was May 12th, was 4.4 from almost 10, not even quite a year ago. So that was amazing, huge. Um, and just with all the work I've done on myself, not even just in finding a partner, but just with myself, I'm healthier now. I'm happier than I've ever been. My relationships are better. I've never had a problem with personal relationships because I'm a very outgoing person. It's just always been those, I don't mean as a 
I mean, like as in friendships, my personal relationships as in dating is always where it's been bad. And I, I, I don't think it was conscious until the last two or three. And then I knew what I was doing wrong. I just didn't know how to fix it. And then I have ultimately, after the attack, decided I wasn't going to date until I knew how to fix it Mm. (laughs) and not do it wrong. (laughs) Exactly. And so so that was, you know, five years between that attack and you getting back into dating at the beginning of this year, right? Yeah. And I, I, Mark and I have seen a lot of each other, well, a lot in the last, since probably January, but before then we'd been seeing each other probably once a month. And um, we started talking about dating again in January and I kept making different excuses. Like I'd had surgery and I was like, oh, I don't want to do this right now. Um, Yes. You know, and then it was funny. It wasn't until we had the big boot camp which ended up primarily just being the two of us the last few hours. Yes. Um, but we were visioning things and I kept visioning things with Mark. And so that's how I was like, huh. And so I made a promise to you and myself that I would contact him the next day, which was hard because I found out later that night, a friend of mine had committed suicide. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I still followed through with that the next morning. And the more and more that I see him and talk to him and, uh the more and more that we're planning i mean we've even talked about buying a place abroad um in spain i know that it was the right thing to do yeah and i just couldn't be happier yes and i know it's been what a beautiful journey to to see you to develop and grow and um i'd love to you know talk a little bit about your journey as well considering um I know that you've been in a number of different coaching programs or had different coaches in the past. So when did you first start realizing that maybe coaching was something that you felt like you, you needed? It was shortly before my, well, about a year before my second heart attack, I started looking into it and I found a group that seemed to be very promising And I'm not saying I didn't get a lot out of it because I did, but it ended up being something else that was relatively bad for me. uh, And they ended up trying to take advantage of me, which just brought things down another level. Because again, I was like, what am I doing (laughs) to attract this? Um, But obviously since then, at at some point, I finally just said enough is enough and told them where to go. Yeah. And then I tried various different coaches since then. And, I didn't really just, I just didn't find the right fit until I met you. Yeah. And that seems to have worked for me. Since I'm we super glad that uh, we found each other for sure, because it's been a, a developing, growing relationship that's to also turn into, a, you know, a friendship as well, which is awesome. And, you know, hearing of the growth that you've had in, and, and how put, quickly you put things into action, um, you know, is amazing because not everyone does it so quickly. And I, I guess probably at the beginning, you know, it took a lot of me jabbing and, and checking it up on you. Don't Rob, have you done this? Have you done that? But that's well, part of funny anyway, because right? before, <laughs> before I reach out to anyone, you included, um, because I think I started in one of your groups back when you kind of first started it, but I watch a lot before I reach out to someone and then I try to if they're doing any kind of free things and I try to check it out just so I can get a better feel for it. Um, So, and the person I was working with prior to you was, Oh, she was terribly expensive. Um, And then she was someone I met through the other group. So even though she really wasn't connected, I just, it just didn't work for me. And she was also a woman, which sometimes doesn't uh, it's a different energy not saying that you know you can't have coaches who are women but sometimes as gay men it's better to talk to someone who understands exactly what it is you're going through on in 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 different levels and what's been probably holding you back from getting what you really wanted out of life right right well and she and I really did not work on gay things we kind of worked on more things with 
family and growing up kind of issues. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you went into coaching for the, you know, early on, what was it, what was it that you were looking for from coaching initially? Was it to, to deal with that stuff or was it, you know, cause when we, we, we had a number of different things that we worked on, but like what initially got you into wanting coaching is it, was it to find love again? Was it for something else? It wasn't really necessarily to find love. It was more that I, you know, I, I knew what I did wrong in relationships and I wanted to learn how to fix that part of myself because I've early on in the process, I realized I didn't really need someone to complete myself. So I wanted to make really good, make, make really certain that I knew that I was not going to repeat the same patterns. So I wanted to not even attempt to start dating again until I knew that those patterns wouldn't be repeated and that I could successfully, well, part of it starts with standing up for myself, being truly vulnerable and authentic, whereas prior it was always doing and saying whatever I felt everyone else wanted me to be or say, which is funny because I don't do that with my friends. Um, (laughs) But in relationships, it was always whatever they wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And so obviously part of our journey, you know, for you to get to a place where you could be open again to, to finding love and actually finding, like I said, a healthy and more passionate relationship, we obviously know that we needed to work on ourself, right, and actually heal a lot of the stuff that we've been through. So we did um, a great session together, timeline therapy session, uh, probably about, what, three or four months ago. I think it was, you know, February, March, maybe I'm, I'm from, from my memory. Talk to me a bit about what, hap- what, what, what shifted between before you did that and after that, because that's where I really saw an acceleration of you really putting in the work to, to, and, and really taking it to, a, to another level. Well, I had a lot of breakthroughs during that. Um, something I think you intended to just be a couple of hours ended up being a few sessions. It's okay. Yeah. These things happen. Um, you, you, you're committed till we get the result. <laughs> I mean, I think there were what, six levels and we just did like one or two, the very first. <laughs> the first um, one was, yeah, we just got through the the first one, which was anger. Um, and I think there was a little, a, la- a level of you still holding on to, to 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 it being part of your story so I think we had to do a lot of talk to really get you to a place where you could say look I'm ready to let go of this fully right and I think a lot of what I realized ultimately that could like kind of be a uh, constant through all of those was like anger fear rejection all of that it wasn't so much that I feared rejection or any of that stuff from others I was still having it towards myself Mm -hmm. because yeah so it wasn't until I could get over that that I could allow myself to be truly open and honest and vulnerable with others and even like with Mark I kept saying well he's not going to accept the ostomy well shit Mark's been there through all of my stuff and if he'd had a problem with it, he would have been gone a long time ago. So in, the, I mean, ultimately I knew it wasn't a problem for Mark. It was a problem for me. Yes. Like letting go enough to be around him with this. Cause I mean, it does present our relationship differently now, <clears throat> but honestly, in a good way, he's not a super sexual person when it comes to, to intercourse. And at the time we dated prior, I was. And now I really can't be. So everything kind of works out the way it's supposed to, I guess. Isn't that, uh, isn't that funny, right? <laughs> I, why, like you said, once you healed the things that were holding you back, you know, even though, you know, we, we oftentimes externalize the anger, the sadness, the fear, the hurt, the guilt, and put it onto other things. In reality, it's always return back to us we actually are angry at ourselves we're sad to ourselves so when we can heal through that pain 
we can actually see things in a whole different light, right? Letting go of the ego part of us that needs to have these things to yeah. for us to make up to to you know our story or our journey, and also the excuses we can say to go, oh, I can't, I'm not dating because no one's going to accept this part of it, you know. Whereas we all realized afterwards that that was a total load of BS, right? And you know, you opened your eyes to see things, and you went on, you know, you, you you pretty much weren't online dating and you jumped onto online dating and you started talking to quite a few people. You went on, you know, like, yeah, talk, yeah. talk to me a bit about how that went because, um, you know, you would you would keep me updated. You would tell me about, you know, each of the dates that you were to- and who you were talking to. Um, I mean, it went fine. I didn't really have negative experiences. Uh, you know, I hear I'm also in another group And tonight a lot, it was tonight they talked about online dating and all everyone kept talking about was like grinder and scruff. And I'm like, that's not really geared towards dating. That's geared towards sex. And I gave up those apps, gosh, probably before Mark uh, the first time. And uh, I will say that that was awesome because that's just nothing but a bunch of stress. And I mean, sure, you get to hook up occasionally, but um usually when I was done with that, I felt worse than before. Mm. And it's like, Lord, I could have done this better myself and didn't have half the stress and worry. Um, exactly. Allowing some perfect stranger into my home um, where, you know, I've got the gun under the pillow next to me, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of an odd one out in that aspect. But um, so, you know, I did other sites like Bumble and OkCupid okay and, I didn't really have bad experience. I did have one guy that I told my medical story to, and he said that was fine. And then the next morning ghosted me, which I was like, fine, whatever. You know, I just wish he could be a man and say it. Yeah. Um, That's the whole reason I tell you, because why bother if it's going to be a problem? Um, and that that alone, what a what a level of growth! Because you, before you said you were so afraid of putting yourself out there because of the of that medical issue, but for you to do it, someone says okay, and then they ghost you, and you to go whatever, that's fine. That shows how much growth you had from you know yeah. from six months well, prior, two months prior, right? It wasn't on me; it's on him. Exactly. So, whatever, you know. So you know. Um, I met some guys, uh, but I just didn't feel that connection. And I would always go back to Mark. (laughs) And I don't, I kept saying, no, that'll never work. Um, (laughs) I don't know why. I guess it's because I knew it could be a good relationship and healthy. And part of me was still afraid of myself. So it wasn't until we had that big, powwow session that Friday night that I was finally like, okay, this is what I really want. I just need to do it. Yeah. And that's exactly right. Cause you had mentioned him before, but you, the way you'd always talked about him in the past was off. Oh, like it wasn't, it wasn't in that way. And I realized throughout the sessions as we were talking about each other, cause we, cause when we were in the boot camp, we were, we were looking at all of the different areas of our life and, you know, calling him what we really want and, and, and whatnot. And as we would get to, to further into it, you, you kept mentioning his name. And I just, at first I just kept mentally taking a note, but as we got to the point where we did the, the vision to, to, to 12 months in the future, Literally, it was all everything you had in there was with him, and it was a huge kind of shift in realization for you, right? It was. And the funny thing was, is part of it for me was I was like, well, I don't see a future. I really want to get married, and I, I didn't really see us like cohabitating. We're both huge into art, and we both have a ton of it. So I just did not see like cohabitating because we'd have to get such a big place to have all the art. But then when we got together, and he was like gosh, I've been waiting for you to talk to me about this forever. And this is what I was hoping you wanted to talk about. And well, the first thing he wanted to do was talk about what had happened so many years ago, because after two years of dating him, I didn't like really break up with him or anything. I just kind of ghosted him. Mm. Stopped. I mean, I didn't really stop talking to him because we stayed friends, but for probably about a year, I didn't talk to him. And I mean, I went from like being together every night and going to church every weekend and to just 
I just moved on. And you know, and, and you never had a conversation about that ever in the past. And when we talk about it, our views on what happened were totally different. Yeah. He thought, he thought I was looking for someone that could keep up with me financially. Of course, at the time I had a lot more disposable income than I do now, but I was like, oh, it was never that. <laughs> no, and and then just our I was like, maybe we should have talked about this because we were both totally off base on what the other was thinking. And there you go, making assumptions on what the other person is thinking. You're both totally off base. And then when we talked, he was like, No, I do want to get married. And I don't want to live in the US anymore. So I don't, I see us both getting rid of everything except a few pieces of, you know, things that are really sentimental. And then we talked and realized that it would be nice to keep a place here. So we would, both of our places are paid for. So we would keep one of our places here and then buy a place. He wants Spain, but he's open to other suggestions. Yeah. (laughs) So we're going to go in 23. So he can show me all the places he really loves there. And I, I'm not opposed to anywhere. <laughs> you <laughs> love awesome. traveling, right? It's one of your favorite things, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm just really excited. You know, every time, I mean, he's just constantly making plans and ex- including me. And um, he seems to get a little disappointed when I can't go, you know, like, uh, Friday night, he wanted me to go with he and his mom and some of his friends. To, we have what's called first Friday night art walk here in town. And it's just a big art thing in, on a street here. And you just walk up and down the street and there's all the galleries are open and they serve Beautiful. food and wine. And, but I'm going to the Pride foot, uh, softball game. So I couldn't go. So then he asked me, you know, if I could hang out with him on Saturday night. And I'm like, well, I'm going to a show and I didn't want to tell you because I knew you'd really want to go. <laughs> and, um, but my friend that's going with me is flying in on Saturday. And if her flight is delayed, he's like, I'll find a sitter because his mom, you know, so he's like, you're going to see Dear Evan Hansen. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. But Saturday, Sunday, we're going to church and then to an, an art exhibit. And then we're bringing his mom over here. And a bunch of us are getting together for pizza and board games. Beautiful. I love that. We went to this party with a bunch of his friends on Monday, on Memorial Day. And for starters, it was like four couples, which was odd because when we dated before, there's like four of them. It was like the four amigos. And they were all single. And Mark was dating me. So I never really felt accepted. And of course, now they're all married and have second homes out of the country. So they're not currently in in the U.S. (laughs) Um, Because one of them just closed on their house in Italy. But um, so it was strange because when we got there, they all knew about me and he'd been talking about me. And he's a very private person. So I was kind of shocked by that. Yeah. So, and his mom kept saying how she likes this one. (laughs) I'm like, Uh, you've known me for a long time, Terry. (laughs) Just a little while, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But she may not have known that we dated before. She Um, she may not know, yeah. I mean, he made it very clear that we had on Sunday, but I'm sure she doesn't, she may not even remember who I am tomorrow when I go over there. Yeah, yeah. But that's just how life goes sometimes. Yeah. And so with you, the, with, from the first time that you dated and obviously, you know, how it ended and you realized that, you know, the big thing that was missing was you, you didn't communicate how each other was feeling and, and that probably affected, you know, a number of different feelings over, over the years. So going into the second round that you're doing and, and, you know, moving into this with, with the growth that you've had, um, what do you think are going to be the biggest shifts and the most important things for you to focus on? Um, considering that you guys are in different places of your life now and and you've grown so much? Well, I think it will bring us a lot closer. Um, uh, Travel is huge for both of us. Um, So that will be big. He, of course, is still working and only has so much time that he can travel. But 
the one thing I will say, I was, gosh, I hope I don't put this podcast on my Facebook. Um, but the person I was traveling with last week, there was a lot of drama with he and his partner. And, you know, I texted with Mark every day, but I only physically talked to him on the phone maybe three times. Mm. Um, when we did, though, we talked for a half hour to an hour each time, but they texted nonstop, had to talk on the phone all the time. And it wasn't because, like, they really wanted to talk to each other. It was because the boyfriend was jealous. That I was going to say there was a level of not the lack of trust, right? And it drove me insane because by Friday morning, his partner was like breaking up with him because he didn't trust him. And I was like, I am so glad that that is not, and I would never, no, I would never do that again. If someone can't trust me, uh, then I just can't do that because I do travel a lot and I travel alone a lot because I, I realize that people that I'm with are not retired yet like I am. And they can't travel like I do. So either I travel by myself or I travel with friends and I have to be able to date someone that's going to trust me. You know, and yeah. Mark is not a jealous person. And it was so, it was so nice and so relieving because I am at a place, I'm, I'm 50 years old. I don't want drama. Of course. And I'm sitting there thinking, you're 57 and your boyfriend is 64. And it's and drama. Like, I'm like, y'all need to, do some work on yourself. <laughs> and that's the thing, when you see that and you have done the work on yourself, it's easier for you to realise those things. But maybe, you know, a few years ago, it, that might have seemed normal or, or whatnot because you might have been in those unhealthy relationships. So it's great to see that you can now see that in other people. Um, and like I said, unfortunately, like age doesn't, you know, mean that you have more maturity in, in relationships. It, 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 it You still bring baggage if you haven't dealt with it. So the healing you do on yourself means you can go into new relationships and, you know, come at them with a completely different perspective, right? It was just hard for me because I felt like towards the end, I was walking on eggshells. Around you know, that. He's like, oh, I'm just not going to post on Facebook anymore because so-and-so wants to know who this is or why this person's commenting. And I'm like, so glad Mark's not like that. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I have so many friends on Facebook that I don't really even know, mm. you know, and they make comments all the time, like you're handsome or you're sexy. And I am so glad that Mark's not going, who's this? Who's that? Exactly. You know, all I ever do is say thank you. Or if it's rude or lewd, I delete it. Yeah. But, um, I don't see why that should make someone else jealous. Yeah. I mean, unless you're doing something, then. Exactly. If you don't, yeah, exactly. Unless you've done it in the past when you've built that up and yeah, who knows? So. So, so with um, Mark, what are the three things you love the most about Mark? Well, just the main thing is probably. Um, how much we compliment each other. Beautiful. Um, um, the open communication. Nice. Uh, the the religious aspect. I guess that's three. There's way more. Are you? Do you want? Do we'll go for it. <laughs> go on. What's your top fifty things? Rob, you said it's <laughs> There's just a lot. I mean, we're both Beautiful. very health conscious. We've had a lot of heart. Both of us have had a lot of heart issues. Um. You know, so those kind of things. Um, although Sunday, uh, both of us were like, more wine, please. <laughs> it's, it's a lot with his mom. And I don't think he knew what he was biting off. But um, now he's got your support. So, you know, whatever happens, you can, you know, do it together, right? Yep. And I've told him, you know, because he works during the day, at least he's at home. But I've said, look, if you need a break, I'll come get her. But yeah, I had originally said, we'll go to a museum or we'll go out to a movie. I'll bring her to my house and we'll watch a movie or play a game. Yeah. Something a little less strenuous, right? I'm afraid to like lose her or something. Mm. Yeah. But, I mean, not necessarily afraid, but I don't want to be like, it will be too, too intense for me. It would be yeah. better to just bring her here and be more relaxed. Yeah. Nice. So, I'll make sure she has her purse. 
definitely. <laughs> so, Rob, before we go, what would you tell someone who's out there listening to this who may have been in your position a few years ago, been through, you know, a lot of unhealthy relationships or maybe had pulled themselves away from dating again? What would you tell that? What would be your advice to someone who's who's out there, maybe in your a similar situation to you? First of all, don't ever give up. Um, but more importantly, especially if you realize that you are on a bad, bad track and have bad tendencies relation, with relationships, I love to date narcissists um, or used to learn how to love yourself first and that'll all just go away. And then you'll, you'll find someone. Yes. And you will also find that you don't need someone. So you're ready when the right person comes along. You're ready when you don't need it, right? Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, um, thank you so much for your time today, Rob. I always love talking with you and uh, I trust that this has been a valuable um, conversation for the viewers out there. Um, so, yeah, really appreciate you being here. Well, and thank you for having me. It was wonderful. Awesome. Well, guys, that's it for this week's episode. Really appreciate you listening. As always, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, feel free to comment below or you can keep the conversation going with me on Facebook. But uh, until next week's episode, always remember that you've got this and I've got you. See you next week.